tween scene, tween beginner embroidery workshop video four. Hi tweens, the last two stitches that we're going to learn today are the lazy daisy and the satin stitch. The lazy daisy is basically using the chain stitch that you learned earlier, but to make a flower. Uh, to make it easier to um, see what I'm doing, I'm going to outline a four petal flower so you can see where I'm going, and then I'll do one freehand. Um, when you start, you might want to um, outline some in pencil. I'm using a marker here to make it easier in the video to see. So remember with the chain stitch, we come out in the middle. Be sure to leave a tail. And we're going to go back down right next to where we came out, but slowly so that we can catch a loop and make our petal shape. So we're going to pull most of the way through, leaving a loop, and then come out at the top of your petal and catch that loop. You want to pull slowly and gently so that you leave plenty of uh, space to make it look like a petal. And as if you're finishing the chain stitch, you're going to come back down over the edge of your petal and anchor it. Like so. You might need to spread your petal apart a little bit with your needle if you've pulled too hard. And then you're going to repeat that for as many petals as you want. Come up at the middle of your flower, back down next to it, pulling slowly so that you catch the loop or so that you leave a loop and then catch it at the top of the petal. that and then coming down over the thread the floss very close to where you came up and anchoring it in place up through the middle Back down next to it. Straighten out your loop. You don't want it twisted. Up at the top of your petal. slowly go back down over your floss near where you came out to anchor it in place one more for this flower up in the middle Back down in the center. Leaving your loop. Catching it at the top of the pedal by coming back up. And then back down, securing your loop in place. And there you have a lazy daisy. If you want to, you can um, 
put a French knot in the middle. I'm not doing that here because it's pretty close. So now I'm going to do one freehand. With a lazy daisy or any, uh, almost any flower, you can do um, as many petals as you want. And you can make them as big as you want. The nice thing about this uh, technique is that it's pretty um, adjustable. So I would suggest when you start learning to do this, you um, keep your loops fairly big to make it easy to catch them. I'm going to give this one a whole bunch of petals. And when you do things freehand, it may end up a little wonky. Um, that's why I suggest penciling things in while you're beginning. If you really want it to look a certain way, it's easier to follow a pencil guideline. Also, if you make your petals a little bigger, it's easier to... Um, allow them to uh, show the fabric through in the back versus if you make them small they may look more closed up come up again through the middle back down catching my loop now in this instance I'm working basically um, clockwise from what would have been the six o'clock position, but you can do this in any order. Doesn't have to be a specific order. And I'm gonna keep going. few more. If you want um, to, as you're practicing this, you can try uh, different variations, making the petals different sizes. Um, you know, if you look at a flower, it's not always symmetrical. It's not always um, a real flower, I should say. It's not always symmetrical. It's not always even. Sometimes they have odd numbers of petals. Sometimes the petals are shaped a little wonky. So it just depends on how naturalistic you want it to look. You could make the petals alternating sizes, one big, one small. There's so many possibilities with this stitch. If you want it to look more delicate, I would suggest using only half of your um, floss threads in the strand, maybe say three instead of all six. I used all six here just to make the video easier to see. But that's up to you or up to the pattern that you're following. You could also use the Lazy Daisy to make uh, butterfly wings. You could use um, for a couple different things as much as your imagination will allow. I'll do a couple more petals here. A single lazy daisy leaf um, uh, attached to a long uh, 
chain of embroidery might look like um, a leaf on a plant rather than a petal. So lots of possibilities with this stitch. All right, I think I fit one more in here. And see when this last one, my uh, thread, my floss twisted a bit. So this petal's a little more closed than the last one. There we go. Make sure that's straight. Up through the middle, catch it. Back down. Now I've got a big opening in the middle here. I'm going to do a couple of French knots to fill that in. It'll also help me practice my French knots. Remember that is you pull up from the middle, twist around twice your, your needle, and back down next to where you came out. And it didn't quite fill in all the way. It's a little loose, so I'm going to do another one next to it. Try and anchor that down a little bit. French knots always seem to work either perfectly for me or not well at all. <laughs> Today's a kind of an off day. So I'm going to come up in the middle again. Twist it around. Almost forgot to do that. And then back down next to where I came up. So there's a lazy daisy with a couple of French knots in the middle. All right. Now we're going to learn the satin stitch. The satin stitch is probably one of the easiest ones to do, and it's great for filling in shapes. Um, for the purpose of this, I drew a little rectangle here so that you could see a shape being filled in. Um, basically, you're just going to come up one end of your shape and go down the other, and you're going to do the next stitch right next to that one. And each stitch is going to be as close to the last one as you can make it so that it ends up looking like one solid piece of fill. And the satin stitch, if you want to make it puffier, you can um, go over it in uh, a couple times or you can use um, one of the other stitches as a base and fill in over it with a satin, satin stitch. I've seen that done before. And you're just going to follow along the edges of this rectangle. Again, if you're drawing a shape, I would recommend um, you use pencil. It'll hide easier when with the uh, under the floss. You can outline a shape in your embroidery floss first if you want to, um, and then fill it in with a satin stitch. That's done often with things like leaves. We'll use our satin stitch in our final project to do the bear's nose. fill that in. Satin stitch is fun. It looks good. Um, as I said, it fills in all kinds of objects. It's used a lot in things like leaves. It's used um, uh, for animals and other shapes. Uh, it's pretty versatile and it gives a nice polished look to something when you're done. And there's your satin stitch. And to finish it off, I'll just 
thread it through the back there and make sure it's uh, secure. And that's all of the stitches we're going to learn in this workshop. I hope you're enjoying it. Uh, our next and last video will be how to create your final project, which will use each of the stitches that we've learned.